Um, gentlemen, gentlemen, look, 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 it's, it's, it's Richard Purnell! Hooray! <laughs> I don't believe they say oh, I was for you for that. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, I just wrote this yesterday morning and uh, thought it was the work of genius this morning. And then, it's all right. And then by this afternoon I thought it was shit. And now I've made some revisions. And I don't know where I am, but I'll have a go. This is either. I used to live in Hastings, I used to live in a big old house by the sea. And um, people saw my house as a sort of path to fulfil their most wild and chaotic drunken needs. This is a poem about one of the parties. I, I'm not sure if I held it or it, or it just happened in my house. This is called Ball Compared with Rob. They said you were like a ball in a china shop when they, moved, when they made small talk after the damage was done. But thinking back, there was nothing ball-like about what you did. A ball would have looked at my sparse living room with table, chairs, sofa and TV and thought to himself, there's not enough to go on here and given in. You, on the other hand, had a gift for madness and wildness and drink. Unleashed after you split from your girlfriend you've been with since your late teens. So when you heard that line from the song, that line which goes, saw two shadow men on the balanced road, you took a chair, raised it above your head and threw it up to the ceiling, ripping a hole. While many who saw you swore you were the spit of a ball, I don't care to make comparisons at all. Now when people ask about the hole in my ceiling, I say, that, that hole up there, that was just Rob. Thank you. Nice to see him on guard. <laughs> on a wet day, that's a life save, that is. I've been there with me, racer, no mud guard. Oh, so, 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 yeah, you said it, I was going to skirt around it to be honest, but. <laughs> Which you can never 
turn a blind eye. That's leaving your glorious county behind. Search parties were sent across the marshes on chance of finding a feckless artist. The boy is gone. <laughs> A notice was posted. A boy has been lost. Silly hat, big nose, five foot four in his socks. <laughs> As he relaxed on the ferry, travelling out of Tilbury, Essex, his old girl's terrible message drifted across the estuary with menace. Is this what I get, my son, up in sticks? No warning, no nothing, not even a text. He told himself at Gravesend he couldn't regret. He couldn't believe his life was ever bereft. He did at his best. He puffed out his chest. Walked with a bowl, danced up the style. Telltale signs of another East Saxon exile. Thank you very much. I've been granted a reprieve. Use on the other hand. Quite the opposite. I so I think I might have just said I it's there. I apologise for that. <laughs> I apologise to the, those who educated me as well and for my parents. <laughs> I shan't do it again. <laughs> Um, I, oh, I, I think it might, I might be played with this now. Okay, this is one I think I'll do about a landlord I once had. This is called Pimp My Landlord. Rent is never an easy thing to pay. It's a lot of dough you'll not see again. Dead money, I've heard it called, and for most tenant-landlord relations, that's true. But not for me and Troy. So every time he got his hands on my dosh, he was like a kid in a sweet shop, or a wannabe player in his first drop top. Each month, there'd be a new silver chain around his neck, or a flashy mobile phone with the latest spec. Troy was a crap landlord in most respects, by the greatest of regard for our blooming money. Thank you very much. <laughs>